Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's videos, we're going to be doing the day three spoilers that we had come out today from all the different creators. Um, I didn't say it in day two, but I did say it in day one, and I just want to be able to re-clarify. If you want to know all the great creators that have revealed these cards, maybe you're new to the game and you've seen like one or two channels, and you're not sure what channels to follow, go to the Fab TCG website and... Um, Go to their articles section and then go to the uprising reveals and you'll see a list of all the creators and you can click on it and it'll automatically go to their pages. I just want more people to kind of understand like what creators are revealing these cards if, if you aren't aware. And so you can kind of, you know, check out more fab content. But we're going to get right into it. Have a good slew of cards today. Um, the first one, obviously, is Crown of Providence, which is the big one. The legendary generic head equipment. Um, bottom line, this is a great card. Uh just looking at the card itself, the artwork is amazing. I cannot imagine this card in like foil with like where the strips are going up. Like maybe those are like matted foiled, similar to how Spellbound Creepers is. Could be really dope. Um, it's gonna be really interesting to see how it's foiled, but I, I can't wait to see how the artwork looks in person. Like if you if you draft this at Vegas, which I'm sure someone will, uh, it's gonna be insane. So hopefully someone gets lucky with that. But the card itself, from a play standpoint, it's basically Arcanite Skullcap, but with a little bit of crown of seeds involved. So like you sacrifice the arcane barrier three, but what you get in return is a guaranteed three block and you get to cycle a card out of your hand or out of your arsenal twice and draw a card. So it's basically like two sink belows and three block in one, in one uh, equipment. It's really good. A lot of people are saying rip skull cap. It's going to replace skull cap. I don't think it's going to replace skull cap. I think skull cap still better in other situations when it comes to like arcane barrier and stuff. But this definitely is going to rival Skullcap and definitely something that I could see being used in a lot of different decks that already like naturally use Skullcap. So that's what I thought. Awesome card though. Awesome to see the first legendary. Super excited. Love the artwork. Just really good overall. Next one is Cinderskin Devotion. Draconic Ninja attack action. Um, if you control two or more Draconic Chain Links, Cinderskin Devotion gains go again. So it's basically a one for four go again. Some people would say like this is a bad leg tap right or a bad whatever, but Five's already going to go so wide, and he, it's going to be so easy to get to two and three chain links with him that this isn't going to be a bad card. I'm not saying this is like an auto-include in your deck, but it's definitely not a bad card, especially at red. Um, definitely something you can use. What I'm going to love about Fi, and I think something that people aren't talking about, and we're going to see like what colors are with what commons, because just because something the common doesn't mean it's a guaranteed nine of, um, is he's not going to be required to have zero pitch or zero cost blue pitches. He can like run blue pitches that are one cost, two cost, three cost, right? So it's going to be really nice to kind of balance that out. But this is a good, decent card. Good at common and it's a three block, which is really good. Then we get to double strike. Double strike is the card that I revealed with Doa. Uh, Doa, it was Doa's card reveal, not mine at all. But he, after he revealed the card, he had me on for a different segment so we could talk about it. Just a good friend. Um, and when I first saw this card, I hadn't seen any other cards in this set. We didn't have any prior knowledge or nothing like that. It was just this card. This was the first Uprising card I saw. And when I first saw it, I thought this card was insane. It replaces itself on the chain, right? You attack twice, and it counts for two chain links, and it hits for one both times. If you had two of these, you could threaten mask, like, really quickly, really, like, a lot of different times. So really good value. But as more cards have been revealed... Um, it's, it's to be seen if this card's going to be good because a lot of the cards that have big buffs or big like rupture or on hit effects have to do with draconic chain links. This is not a draconic card. So this isn't going to count towards those draconic hit chain links. So for example, cinder skin devotion, perfect example. If you control two or more draconic chain links, it, it gains go again. If you play two double strike or a double strike that hits twice and then play cinder skin devotion, it won't gain go again because it's not a draconic chain link. So that's just something to keep in mind. The card's still good. It's going to be great in Benji. Amazing in Benji. Um, and just a good, good ninja card. But overall, not as crazy as I thought it would be the more that I see these cards and kind of how I think Fi is going to play optimally. Next one's Engulfing Flame Wave. When Engulfing Flame Wave hits, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an attack action card with cost less than the number of Draconic Chain Links you control, you may you banish it. It's not you may banish it. You will banish it, right? There's no you may banish it. It just says banish it. And then you may play it this turn. So this is really good. It's a two for five for go again. And if it hits, you can banish a card off top of your deck and then play it that turn. So it just extends your turn out. It does cost two, which for five is a lot. Um, but I can see why it costs two. 
I personally think like just the first glance that Fi is going to run probably 10 to 12 blues, maybe not 15 like Katsu can. I think it'll be like 10. Like he'll just want to run some blues, but it'll be all depending on, you know, what we consider key cards in the deck. Like I said, the key thing to know with this card is if it hits, you have to banish that top if it's an attack action. You don't have a choice. So sometimes that may be a good thing. Sometimes it may be a bad thing. It just depends. So if you have no more resources flowing, you hope to God that you banish something that costs zero, right? So that's basically how that works. Then you have Invoke the Mai. It's an Invoke. It's not a one of like some of the other Invokes are. So you could have multiple of these or three of these, I guess. Uh, transform target ash you control into Thamai with Go Again. And we'll talk about what Thamai is here in a minute. Um, and then you have Invoke. Uh, these names are insane. Vinsurakai, which is the same thing. It's an Invoke for Vinsurakai. You basically invoke the dragon. It costs three, whereas this one costs two. Um, just more dragons for the illusionist. Like I said in the last video, you're definitely not going to be able to run all the dragons with her. You're going to have to pick which ones work for you. Um, but these are just two more dragons in the set. Then you have Lava Vein Loyalty. If you control two or more Drakon Chain Links, Lava Vein Loyalty gains go again. So again, this seems like a really bad head jab, but it's a Draconic attack action, so it's really useful for those Draconic Chain Link turns where you're trying to get a lot of Draconic Links on the chain. Um, and getting two Chain Links with Fi, like you're going to be able to do that without breathing, right? Because even his sword, which we'll talk about here in a second, counts towards those Chain Links because it's a Draconic weapon. So definitely a good card. Um, then you have Mounting Anger. When Mounting Anger hits, you may you may banish an attack action card from your hand with cost less than the number of Draconic Chain Links you control. If you do, it gains plus one, and you may play it this turn. So, for example, if you play this and it hits, you could banish Lava Vein Loyalty. And if it's over two Chain Links, then it's going to get plus one and go again, right? So you all of a sudden Lava Vein Loyalty saving for four. So you can see how some of these will synergize really well. You're basically getting a free plus one buff on your next attack. So really useful for that. Then you have Rising Resentment. Um, when Rising Resentment hits, you may banish an attack action card from your hand with cost less than the Draconic Chain Links you control. If you do, it costs one less resource to play, and you may play this turn. So, for example, if you have Mounting Anger in hand, it's really easy to put these cards together, and you can see how the synergy works. And you play Rising Resentment, and it hits, and you control two links, then you can banish Mounting Anger and then play Mounting Anger for free. And then when you play Mountain Anger, you can then banish Lava Vein Loyalty and play it for plus one, right? Like these three cards is the exact way. Like if you had these three cards and then a fourth red, so you don't want to pitch anything, you can play Rising Resentment. If it hits, then you banish Mountain Anger, you play it, it hits. Then you banish Lava Vein Loyalty, you play it, it gets plus one, right? So ways that you can turn hands where you don't have that one resource to pay for that one card in your hand, Rising Resentment could make that card be a zero cost. So really good for that. Then you have Searing Ember Blade. This was the really cool Dragon uh, common ninja weapon that we saw, two-handed. Once per turn action, pay two resources. If you control two or more Draconic Chain Link, Searing Ember Blade gains go again. This is a little weird because like, if you have a five-card hand right, and let's just say you have one blue in hand, Right, you're going to want to have a blue in hand because if you have a five card hand with five reds and you play two attacks out, let's just say they're ideally they're both zero cost, and then you want to play Searing Ember Blade, you're going to have to pitch two of your reds to play this. And that's not ideal. I only see this being used when you have a blue in hand. It's really good because it counts towards the draconic attack action chain link like buffs that you see with some cards, but it's only going to be good if you have a blue. If you don't have a blue, I don't see this being a good. Like it's not not that it's not a good weapon. It's not going to be used on that turn. I see Searing Ember Blade used as like an off turn weapon weapon where like you don't have those go wide crazy five turns like I've been talking about in my videos. Um, but you do have maybe like one or two good attacks with a blue, but not like anything to change insane insanely crazy. You play this right now. If you play two attacks, you pitch your blue. You play this, then you can go get a Phoenix form or Phoenix Flame for free because of Fi's ability. Um, so there's definitely ways you can make it work. And I think it's really good overall. And this can be buffed by cards like uprising. All of a sudden, if you have uprising in hand, this is now a two for four, um, which is pretty good. So overall, not too bad of a weapon. Then you have spreading flames. This is going to be one of the biggest drivers to the deck. This and inflame the card in flame are going to be two of the best you can do. There's a reason this is majestic. Draconic attacks you control game plus one. While their base is less, base attack power is less than the number of Draconic Chain Links you control. 
The reason this is, card is important is because it's basically going to buff all of your cards. If you go back to my last video, if you play this on the first chain, m most of the time, basically all your attacks are going to be buffed plus one. The, the My last video, I showed you a 43 damage Phi turn, and it started with this card. Because you play this card, then you play Inflame, then you play Phoenix Form, and Inflame, and if you can combine that with Heat Wave, like if you combine this card with Heat Wave, like if you pop Heat Wave to give your Phoenix uh, Flames uh, plus one, and then you play this, they have the, they're basically going to have guaranteed plus two, plus their one they're already going to have. So if you play Heat Wave into this, into an attack, into a Phoenix Flame, your Phoenix Flame is going to hit for three. So it's just, it's a driver to the deck. It's going to be one of the best cards you can play to like have those crazy, crazy go wide turns. It's just pretty nuts. Then you have Take the Tempo, which is simp like touring a tempo. It's really funny. When Take the Tempo hits, if you've hit three or more times this combat chain, banish top card of your deck. If it's an attack action card, you may play it until the end of your next turn. This does not have go again. If this card had go again, goodness gracious, it would be nuts. This card is a Katsu card. I don't see this being played in five. Maybe you'll play like one or two of them, maybe, because you want to maybe have a setup turn for the next turn. But this isn't the ideal card for Fi. but this is a really good card for Katsu. Like, you play this at the end of a Katsu turn, um, and they let it hit. It doesn't have go again, so they don't want to really block it. Like, you can play this off even bigger than that. You can Razor this. You can do a bunch of different stuff, so really good overall. Then you have the Mai. We walk. We did. Sorry, these are out of order for these, but we did invoke the Mai earlier. So if you play invoke the Mai and you play this, it's a two cost dragon. Opponents can't play cards or activate abilities during your turn. Really good against Kano. Really good against you know anybody that wants to play on your turn. Has four health. Really good. This would be a good cyborg card for Kano and Icelander per, uh, specifically. Then you have Tome of Firebrand again. Go look at my last video when I said the forty three damage uh, Fi turn. This card's bonkers, and it's so good for Phi. Um, it's an amazing tome. It's instant speed, so it doesn't take up your action point. It only costs one, and you draw two. So you play this at the end of a chain. Like like I, the Phi turn I had that was 43 damage, I played uh, the spreading, sp spreading Flames card into Inflame, into a Phoenix form, into something else, and then I played, th or, and then I played this on the fourth link. So it counts for this, um, and you draw two cards. So it's just nutty. It lets you extend turns. It lets you have seven, eight, nine chain links in a, in a turn. It's just really good. So definitely glad they put this in the deck. Um, then you have Vincer Kai, which is again to the invoke. Whenever Vincer Kai hits a hero, it deals three arcane damage to him. It only has one health, but it's basically a one for nine, or like a four for nine, really. Sorry, three for nine, because it costs three to play. But once it's a three for nine, basically, it's it's just nuts. It's gonna be really good in like high aggro matchups where you're wanting to keep tempo and just push damage. Um, definitely an all offense aggro card because this card's gonna die the very next turn unless you can somehow prevent the damage. Um, but just really good card. And yeah, so that was a day three spoilers. Um, I don't think I missed any, but if I did, let me know. Um, I'll be doing the last day tomorrow for day four for Tuesday. Uh and yeah, let me know what y'all think of the cards. Let me know what y'all's favorite cards are so far in the set. Um, there's so many good cards, and it's going to be so much fun playing all these heroes, really. Uh, I was super excited to play Icelander. Obviously, I was excited to play Five because I'm a ninja main. But I was super excited to play Icelander before the set started. And now that I see all these Draconic cards, I'm super excited to play Illusionist and Five. to be honest with you. Jeremiah and Phi. So, um, yeah. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not, go to another Fleshbug career. Do it for them so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.